Um, the Beef Tribunal in the 90s examined allegations of political influence in relation to alleged abuses of the system and failure of regulatory authorities. Its conclusion highlighted widespread improper relationships between the beef industry and government. A shocking set of scandals were uncovered and virtually nothing happened. No one was held to account and public trust was totally eroded. Fast forward to now and for months journalists have reported that workers are frightened to speak out about their horrendous working conditions without anonymity for fear of retribution. We've known since before May um, that this situation was likely to occur due to national and global trends and the unique setting in these workplaces that put it at greater risk of clusters of COVID-19. It's physically impossible for staff to be two metres apart in many plants. Not one improvement or prohibition notice has been issued in light of inspections. Um, the meat industry uh, is still worth billions, yet a, the budget set aside for inspections in comparison is pittance. Of the 15,338 meat plant workers, 8,896 are migrants. The non-EU workers are bound to their employers by their work permits. 90% of workers get no sick pay, so of course they're more likely to turn up to work when they have symptoms of COVID-19. There hasn't been a ban on subcontracting in this sector. The Minister for Health has said that he personally thinks factories with clusters should close. The Tornister has said that the power does exist under the public health legislation for the HSC to order businesses to close, and yet this did not happen. Our government has closed down entire counties, hundreds of businesses, but somehow lacks the power to close plants, plants with confirmed clusters. That they have since voluntarily closed is irrelevant to this point. Histori history has shown us that the industry has very considerable political clout and that the government has turned a blind eye to the industry's scandalous failings in the past. Objectively, it is completely unreasonable to ask other businesses where there have been no outbreaks to close while allowing the main source of these clusters to remain open. It speaks volumes about the powerful interests that control the sector and raises questions about some of their political connections today. Do you believe that the industry should be given the special treatment they've been afforded so far? And does the industry still have close relationships with, with members of the government and strong political influence? That question is for Mr. Carroll. Chairman, um, thank you for those questions. Um, I, uh, I suppose referring back to something that happened 30 years ago in a completely different environment, I don't see the relevance of that to today, where we're dealing with a pandemic. I've explained the relevance. And, and what we're... What, 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 and I, maybe I'll look at the last point that you've made. I mean, the Minister for Health uh, did uh, over last weekend talk about um, uh, plants that had uh, large clusters closing um, and that had an influence. Now, uh, what we would say and what the Minister and his government colleagues have decided upon is a testing regime that will be extremely comprehensive, that will run over, over a four-week period, and every single site will have a test protocol in place. So the control uh, uh, of clusters will be dealt with in the context of that four-week testing protocol, where after each round of test, any positive test... I'll move on if you won't answer out. the question. Now, the question about closures, generally speaking, is, is that where we want to be in our economy? Do we want to, for example, in any particular case, decide that if you have three or five or six or seven or so uh, positive no, cases on. that you, for, that you um, close Healy. Healy, the entire the company that employs 600 um, people? That hiring through agencies may have been an aspect of the past, but it's certainly not the situation in the industry now. Um, are the authorities investigating the issue of agencies used by meat factories? Um, is the revenue satisfied that all legally, ne legally necessary supports are being paid by the factories uh, to their workers. Um, we know the German government has decided to ban the use of subcontractors in large meat plants. Um, all meat workers should be employed by the factory and therefore have full protection under employment law. Uh, will this be happening here, Mr Healy? And also, in the future, if there's cases of outbreaks in food processing plants like this, uh, will they be closed down like these ones have? Uh, thank you, Deputy. In relation to the meat industry and the primary processing industry represented by Meat Industry Ireland, I want to say again that direct employment uh, of workers, uh, uh, direct employment by the company is 
what happens is is the the mainstay of this industry in relation to agency workers and i did say as you refer to at the last at the last sitting of of, of that we joined uh, we have looked at this further uh, surveyed members and we believe that the situation as far as mii members is concerned is that there's uh, less than two percent of the workforce uh, provided by agency. So it is not what is being claimed. It is not the case that's been made out there, and it's important to, to clarify that. In relation to go forward situations, it is an essential service. Obviously, the powers are there to close facilities. They will, in relation to an outbreak or a situation, it will be determined by the local health authorities. We want community. to find a way that we can continue to, to maintain the food supply chain, but also deal with, with, with worker safety and what's happening in terms of the testing regime. And it has been said by SIP2 when we met them earlier this week, the testing regime that we're about to head into now has twin Will objectives. Will individual plants with new clusters Deputy. be closed down? Uh, every, every case will be individual, de uh, uh, Deputy, and, and what was agreed, by, uh, what was, uh, agreed amongst us uh, with SIP2 earlier this week was in terms of the testing, in terms of protocols around closures, they have twin objectives, one, worker safety and continuity of production. So we have to find that way through. The best way through that is rapid results, more testing and rapid results. And if there is an extreme situation, the authorities, the one plant that we represent in the four that are affected at the moment has been closed down for quite some considerable time now and it is it is closing down it causes problems for everyone in the in the supply chain so we have to find a way where businesses can continue and workers are safe and that's the testing regime with rapid results thanks mr healy thank you deputy cairns uh, the next speaker